And now on behalf of the EFD group, Mr Farage. Thank you. I want to begin today on a happy note to remember that it is 20 years ago this very week that the United Kingdom, having been signed up by the Conservative government to the exchange rate mechanism, broke out of the exchange rate mechanism. It was a great liberation for us. And of course, once having been bitten, we didn't join the Euro project, thank goodness. Uh, sadly, uh, the same is not true for much of the rest of Europe. And I thought, through the last 18 months or so, that the economic logic of why Britain left the ERM would apply, particularly to those Mediterranean countries. And I foresaw that actually those countries would leave the Eurozone, probably with Greece leaving this year. But I now have to accept that I've been wrong about that, because I had totally underestimated the complete fanaticism, Mr Barroso, of you your College of Commissioners and the European Central Bank. You've come out fighting on all fronts. Um, today you announced there's going to be a banking union, yet more centralised control, yet more regulation. Uh, you make it clear that whilst you think the nation state should continue to exist, it mustn't have any democratic powers. All democracy is to be vested here under what you call the community method, which of course means that your unelected commission has the sole right to present that legislation. So I don't believe you when you say that, and I, I find the tone of much of what has been said and done over the last few days really very worrying. Mario Draghi, now known by some that believe in the euro as Super Mario, well, he showed us his big bazooka the other day. He upped the stakes, uh, and he told us, and it's to me an odd concept, that he had unlimited money. Now, I don't think money grows on trees, um, and I think that money is limited to what the German, Dutch and Finnish taxpayers are prepared to put in. But he's made it clear, his intention, he will fight to the last German taxpayer to keep the Mediterranean countries that should never have joined the euro in there. And you've got, of course, the Prime Minister now of Italy, uh, perhaps we ought to call him Monstrous Mario, who made it clear last week that he feared that nation-state democracy could bring down the European Union, and therefore we have to bypass nation-state democracy and pass all the powers here. Your henchman, um, Oli Rehn, who's here today, I mean, he dares to tell countries when they should and should not have general elections. He's urging Spain to accept a full bailout so that they too are trapped in the Euro prison. You know, I have to accept uh, that you now have the whip hand over the citizens of Europe, and I now think that this Euro crisis will go on for a whole miserable decade. In the end, you will have to face the reality that even France and Germany cannot survive together in the same economic and monetary union. And certainly with uh, President Hollande reducing retirement ages, upping minimum wages and bringing in a hate tax for the successful, which will see all the entrepreneurs leave France, um, I'm afraid that gap will get bigger. And I wonder where the hope comes for those that believe in nation-state democracy. Well, we've heard that the German court this morning um, has decided that the ESM is OK. Maybe the Finns will say they've had enough. Maybe the Germans, as a country, will say we no longer are going to go on feeling ashamed and guilty of what our grandparents' generation did and will start to stand up for our own economic interest. I don't know. But I suspect that the best hope we've got actually comes from the United Kingdom where now the demand for a referendum is stronger than it's ever been, where a Conservative Prime Minister is in very deep trouble. And I think, Mr Barroso, today, the British people hearing you calling for the European Union to become a global power, making it absolutely clear that Member States must obey, must obey what you tell them, whether they're in the relatively wealthy North or the poorer South. I think those comments this emerging, creeping Euro dictatorship is something that will repulse millions of British people. And the only good news I take from today is you've helped to bring that referendum just a little bit closer. Uh, Mr Farage, I have a question for you. Will you accept it? Mr Leichtfried. Thank you. President, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Farage. When I was a young member, a long time ago, of course, 
uh, some people uh, learnt then to listen uh, but it's getting a bit boring for the last decade you've been telling us how how awful how monstrous everything is here and there's going to be doom tomorrow the, the disasters are going to come to us from all sides and what's happening i'm not afraid of tomorrow morning some people uh, uh, perhaps b believe you some of the older people perhaps believe what you're saying but i don't uh, i mean think about something new say something new Say something different. Well, I think the point about listening is a very good one. Very good one. You should have listened when the French people voted no to the European Constitution, but you chose to ignore them. You should have listened when the Dutch, by a massive majority of two to one, said no to the Constitution, but you didn't. You rebranded it as the Lisbon Treaty without conceding a single power. You bulldozed it through. And here this morning we hear talk of a new treaty and a new Constitution. And when Little Ireland, when Little Ireland not once but twice, dares to vote no in a referendum on European integration, you don't listen, you bully them and make them vote again. You're the one, sir, who's not listening. Thank you.